Hi, everybody. <laughs> I start by uh, introducing myself a bit. So I'm Sven Reink. I'm from Hamburg, Germany. And I graduated as Master of Computer Science in 2007. And since uh, 2012, I'm working as a freelancing IT trainer. So I teach uh, Java, Kotlin, Ruby, so different programming languages. And in uh, 2014, I started uh, creating a visualization tool for my uh, programming classes. So I could uh, visualize what's happening inside the computer while a Java program is running so that uh, the attendees could understand the concepts of pointers and references and so on. Yeah. And in 2019, I founded my company Flux Particle. And in 2021, I started uh, developing an XSD visualizer plugin, which I want to present today. And what I wanted to say is that now you know my history, my, my focus, my background is in visualization and teaching and not so much in using XML even though I started using it more like with uh, XSLT, for example, I had some uh, experience with uh, in the past. So, and yeah, one thing I wanted to uh, point out first is uh, the difference be uh, between uh, data and document. Uh, we can use XML for both of them. Uh, Data is more like yeah, just structures that we just want to maybe serialize from a program, just dump it on the hard drive and uh, read, it, read it again later. And yeah, we, we saw there are other formats that uh, could do this. JSON, for example, would uh, work very well uh, for this. But for uh, documents, for example, um, yeah, we, we also saw this uh, JSON uh, wouldn't be so good, for example, yeah, to write uh, documents. Um, but uh, why, I'm, why I'm saying this is uh, if we want to define an XML data format or an XML document format, uh, it has an influence about uh, on how we uh, define it. Yeah, I mean, we have for example, XML schema and other ways to define the XML document. But um, yeah, especially uh, XML schema can bit, uh, can get a bit, uh, bit tricky when we try to define a, a document format. I think uh, Schematron is better for that. And yeah, all these things. So I just wanted to you to keep this uh, in mind. And well, yes, this is my uh, plugin. I started uh, creating it in um, for IntelliJ. And the thing is, the idea is just imagine uh, you are a, a developer and you want to write a program that has to deal with some kind of XML interface. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe a... I don't know, yeah, an, an API call or something that uh, still uses uh, XML, yeah, or a file format or whatever, and you just want to look up, oh, how uh, uh, how is this uh, structure uh, defined, uh, for example, and then here with with my plugin, uh, you have it directly where you need it, where you are programming, and um, my focus is really on. Uh, making the visualization as compact as possible so we get yeah, as much on the screen as possible and get a, a, a good overview on uh, what you're looking for. I will, I will do a, a, a demo in a moment so you can see it in action. Um, yeah, the annotations uh, are as, as a tooltip when, when you see these uh, uh, light bulbs. I'm sure it's not really to see here, uh, but yeah, there is a, a light bulb next to the name uh, always when there is a, an annotation, so more information about what this uh, this element means. 
And um, yeah, something I uh, want to show you uh, today as uh, yeah, kind of for the first time is uh, the working uh, tree view, uh, similar to the software near and far. I don't know who knows the software. Okay. <laughs> One, okay, two. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I got inspired by this. I, I like the idea how, how it presents uh, the uh, the XML structure, so we can just uh, go through the structure, how it should work. I think it's not it doesn't work exactly how this used to be, but this is my my first attempt to replicate it for XML schema. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Let's go into the demo. Um, well, first, okay, yeah, here. Um, I have my plugin in uh, IntelliJ, and this is how the XML schema would usually look like. Yeah, a bunch of XML. I'm sure, uh, who knows XML schema? Okay, yeah, a few. So, yeah, I mean, sure, you can read this, yeah, and understand it and, and yeah, dig through it. Um, but at least in my opinion, I think a visualization makes it a lot easier, yeah? So here, uh, for example, we start with the RSS tag. I, I have opened the schema for the RSS format, you know, the, uh, uh, yeah, for newsletters and so on. And then we can open the complex type for RSS, for example. Uh, yeah, is it big enough? Yeah, okay, good. Um, yeah, then here we can see, okay, we have a, a channel element, is, um, actually a sequence of yeah, one channel element in RSS. And now I can open up uh, the channel type and see what is there. So for example, here is the title and the link and the description. These are not optional, they have to be here. And all of these are uh, zero to one, so optional. Maybe there's uh, this tag and it's a sequence. And when I want to example, see what, uh, what category means, I click this and it opens and I see, okay, it is uh, actually uh, a string tag uh, with a domain attribute, which is also a string. Yeah, so I get a bit of information about how, uh, so, so I can see how this, uh, this format works when I want to write a program that wants either to read or write this program. So I can faster understand uh, the format, that's the idea. And with, uh, with the tree view I'm developing right now, this would look like this. We have the RSS element at the root. And when I, now I can open it and see, okay, here's again the sequence with one channel element and I can open this. And then again, I see, yeah, everything that's here. Uh, it's not done yet. That's why the, the types are not shown here. But uh, again, I can open here the category and I see, okay, uh, there is a domain attribute here. Yeah, so I get the same information, but maybe in a, in, in a format that's a bit easier if I want to understand the structure of the XML. Yeah, all, all the types and so on that, that can, be, can become a bit uh, difficult when I have to jump back and forth. And here I just... Uh, can explore the uh, XML format as it would be when I want to work with it. And another format that was actually already mentioned today, the SVG, who has used it, maybe writing by end or something? Yeah, okay. Um, I found a few schemas of SVG, but uh, none of them were really using hierarchies, which um, which is done in the JavaScript implementation of SVG. Um, there is a um, a hierarchy uh, defined for for all the elements, and uh, so I wrote my own uh, XML schema for SVG for a part of it. Um, to show how these uh, 
structures can look like, like this. Here, um, we start with the, with the element type, um, which is just what in uh, HTML would be a tag. And then we have a special SVG element, uh, which defines a class attribute. Uh, if we want to use um, uh, CSS together with SVG. And now we have an SVG graphics element. And this also defines a trans transform attribute, but it inherits uh, the class. So with this structure, I can see how all these things build up after another. And uh, here is the text content element, which has no new attributes, but the text positioning element uh, also has uh, coordinates and uh, rotation, for example. And this is the text element I would actually use uh, to write, uh, to show a text in SVG. And now let's look uh, where we actually would, how we would actually use it. Now here is the element. We always need an element, and I like an, S, uh, an XML schema that is defined in a way that there is just one element on the top level, so I know what the root element is. Uh, uh, XML schema has no, I don't know any other way to show what the root element should be. So I like this way to do it. And when I open the type for the SVG SVG element. I can see, okay, uh, I have a sequence of any number of a choice of either a group element, a rect, a circle, a line, a text, or an image that are uh, those I defined here for, for the example. And yeah, now I can see, for example, the text would be this type that has these attributes. Yeah, this way I could um explore this format yeah and understand how yeah inheritance plays together and uh yeah creates these uh, these structures and there was an oh yeah for for the image right it's here uh there's a special type a uh, preserve aspect ratio, uh, which has an, uh, a defined set of strings uh, that could be inside it. Yeah. Uh, X min, Y min, and so on. Yeah. What I don't, I actually don't know uh, what they uh, exactly do. But here we have with an E, we have an enum. Uh, that says that this attribute can have exactly these values and none other. Yeah. So again, here, uh, yeah, the information is just there, and I would say easily accessible. That's the idea. And uh, yeah, in the tree view, this would look like this. We have the SVG. We can open it. And uh, we can, for example, on the first level, we can have a group. And the group, again, can have a group or one of the other elements. And uh, yeah, so on. We could expand the group like forever. We can uh, yeah, put, into, uh, put groups into groups as long as we want Yeah, with the Matroshka principle. Yeah. Uh, or I just look up what, what I can do with the rectangle. And here I have a. a the attributes again, yeah, just as a way to yeah understand this format. Yeah, and one last example I want to show is the uh, XSL FO format. Who uses this? Okay, also some someone. Yes, very good. <laughs> yeah, it's still very. Uh, good to create PDF files, really nice format. Um, and there's a lot to do, and yeah, there are good uh, references. Um, here we have a lot of tags, and I think maybe the flow tag is interesting. Now we can explore it. And yeah, one problem I had uh, in the visualizing, visual, uh, uh, in, in visualizing the um, um, 
the XSLFO format is that there are a lot of attributes. And so I use the definition of um, attribute groups to group them together. So here we have the flow properties, inheritable properties, and uh, then we get a lot more groups we can uh, dig more into yeah, to see, okay, what, what attributes do I have here? Or if I am just interested in um, the, uh, the tags, uh, I can look here and um, yeah, the uh, half filled uh, blocks here are uh, blocks that can contain text. Yeah. Okay. Is my, is my time up? Okay. Then uh, let me just wrap this up quickly. Um, yeah, I want to support other formats. And uh, well, if you want to try it, you can uh, find it for IntelliJ as uh, XSD WSDL visualizer um, or in the Visual Studio Code uh, marketplace as schema with. I haven't decided yet on, on the title. And uh, you could do me a great favor if you could uh, fill out my survey by either scanning the code or uh, clicking on, on this link in the slides, which will be uploaded. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, if you want to contact me, I'm in, in the Slack group, for example, or yeah, I don't know, you see the ways here on, on the slide. Yeah. Thank you, Sven. Anybody uh, with a quick question? I have one of my own. Uh, annotations, do you present them also? Um, annotations? Um... That's what I meant here. Uh, yeah, as uh, tooltips. Okay, tool yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you.